All right. Uh, part uh, entries are just starting to slowly taper off, so I'm going to get started at least with my introduction. Hello and welcome. I'm Anthony. I work here at PhotoCare in New York. I am one of our medium support uh, specialists and sales associates. Uh, I've been working with the Alpa brand uh, personally for, I want to say, the last six or seven years now, uh, six years or so. Um, it's a fantastic tool uh, that comes with all kinds of different solutions for, for all types of different projects. And that's kind of the beauty of what Alpa is. It's a precision made camera system. And I am going to, to let Andre Aldani, the head of product and communication for Alpa, uh, really tell that story uh, today. So I'm gonna turn it over to him and he's gonna, he's gonna take us through where Alpa started who they are, what they do, and uh, what they can offer photographers in today's times. Andre, take it away. Thank you, Anthony, and uh, welcome everybody, and good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. What I saw from the attendee list, uh, it's quite uh, uh, a, mixed, a mixed audience and a very interesting audience, and uh, already here, thank you very much for tuning in and uh, listening to uh, what we say or what we call it's the Alpha story. It's maybe a little bit uh, about the history itself. Uh, it should be a topic which is uh, not so grief as uh, other things going on uh, at the moment. And so uh, I hope you will enjoy uh, our ride through the last 100 years uh, with Alpha. Maybe one word in the beginning. Uh, what is ALPA? ALPA, or what we use as a claim is uh, we are photographic tool makers. So we are making cameras, but not only cameras, we make a whole universe of instruments. And that's the reason why we also call it not just tools, but also instruments. Um, <laughs> not uh, at the last uh, uh, that you should use your um, lenses and um, uh, handle your lenses with care. It's also enjoying the thrill of photography. What we mean with this, it's not just this, okay, let's use an iPhone, let's use a smartphone and uh, make a picture. It's more about enjoying the whole process of photography and this is uh, an aspect we want to keep uh, with Alpa and with our tools um, also for the future. And the last thing is beyond branding. So it's not standing here maybe for marketing. Uh, this is not a marketing company. What we are doing is hardware. And we want to provide you as photographers with the right tools to transform your ideas, your thoughts, your whatever into real pictures. Um, in the beginning, some facts and figures. Um, we are a Swiss company. It's uh, a company which is owner managed. We are based in Zurich, Switzerland. Uh, our workforce at the moment is roughly some six. If we count in all the students and, and everybody, it's, a, it's around 10. So it's a very small but precious company. We have corporations uh, with various institutions, especially here the, the ATH, so the, that's the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, where we have at the moment a uh, larger project uh, going on for additive manufacturing. Our production partners, as you may know, it's uh, mainly in Switzerland and Germany for the lenses, Rodenstock, Novoflex, etc. Uh, our representations uh, are around the world, and uh, of course, we also welcome you as a customer, as a potential customer, as whatever, uh, as an interested person, we also welcome you here in Zurich. You see on the picture the headquarters here in Zurich. Alpa is roughly 100 years old, at least the company that stood behind that uh, company was Pignon SA. Uh, Pignon uh, was originally founded in 1918, so right after the Great War and the continent lying in shambles and a, a company started 
to do something uh, which is very Swiss. So they made uh, uh, a gears. They started to produce gears for watchmaking. So this cockpit. Um, the company itself uh, it was located in the French part of Switzerland. So that's the, uh, the, the Western part. And as I said, it got founded in 1918. Um, around 1920 or in the 20s, um, a very interesting person showed up. Uh, this uh, person or this man um, was called Bokopolsky or Bolsky or also Bolsey. Uh, he was using several names. He was studying at the time uh, medicine in Geneva at the university. Um, originally, he came from Belarus or the Ukraine, something around there. So while the, 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 um, the Bolshevik re uh, um, revolution was raging, uh, so the, the, the Russian revolution was going on, uh, he might have come to, to Switzerland for, for, um, uh, for doing his studies. And he had this idea of, oh, I want to have a camera. I want to have something very special. And we will look into that uh, uh, right after. So he has a similar idea, or maybe was influenced by lights, of course, uh, with, uh, with, with their camera. Uh, it had to be something very special. And fun fact here, um, Bokopolsky was not only approaching um, Pignon SR for a camera, but he was also approaching another Swiss company, um, the the uh, um, sorry, I said, no. yeah, I said sorry. It's a uh, Payar. Payar is also in the French-speaking part of, of Switzerland, and uh, they were very famous for making uh, music boxes. Uh, Payar, maybe some of you know some of the products. Um, Doron, so the turntable. Uh, Hermes, that was the Hermes baby, that was the typewriter, like a Remington, a very small one, uh, two larger ones, very famous here, at least in Switzerland and in Europe. And they make later the Bolex. And the Bolex is also going back to Polsky, Bokopolsky. So at the same time, he sold his idea to uh, Pinas for, for a camera and for for a film camera to uh, the Payar. The idea was great, but not final. So he came up with some uh, interesting ideas and the engineers had to make it then working and forge it into a product. That's the reason why the Alpha Reflex was born when the Second World War was raging. So we started with the, after the Great War and we went right into the next war. And in 1942, the camera was more or less ready at the first one. In 46, uh, the, 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 the name, the brand Alpha was registered. And that's the reason why we say, okay, it started in 46. Uh, we have in 65, we, have, we had a peak production of 1,400 bodies. In total, in total, only around 38,000 Alpha bodies of the small form of 35 mil camera got produced between 42 and 1990. And in 1990, the company went bankrupt. So let's dive into the products uh, they had. In the 40s, and one of the first products was the Alpha Reflex. So it, most of you can see it has some similar similarities with the uh, with the Leica. Uh, it had, but in contrast, a reflex finder. And because they were not trusting the whole thing, they said, "Okay, we have to do something again and something in addition, and let's make also a range finder." or build in a range finder. So this camera had a range finder and a reflex finder. So just in case and as a fail safe. Um, you see this camera, this is now without the, 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 the finder. Uh, it's very similar to what you would expect from a camera from that time. Um, very sturdy, retractable optics, uh, knobs to turn, something like this. So it was 
quite common, but it was really, really sturdy. It was not just thin and plastic, all plastic but then. It was not just thin. It was really, it was, it was made out of the full. All. An interesting thing also, for example, and we, we, uh, we use this idea later on, um, is the dressing gown. So they were quite clever and they made, at least for some of the models, they say, okay, as today, nobody is really reading the manual. So let's put it on the camera so they have to read it before they can remove it. And so they did. We did the same with our Alpha 12 FPS uh, later on. So we took up this idea, which was very cute and, uh, and a really nice thing. Later in the 40s, uh, they came up with a real prism. So 45 degree uh, uh, entry and, and everything. So they, they, they tried everything. They, they made new models. They, they experimented with the whole thing. And now you might ask, what is Alpha standing for? So nobody knows. Maybe it's the Alps, of course. That's something that could be very close. To, to what you would expect. Uh, but the, the real uh, idea behind the acronym ALPA is absolutely unclear. Also, the next one, then, we, what we see uh, as uh, all near or all near. You see it here? So they really, everything they tried. So now this is with a 90 degree one. And here you see this ALPA all near sign, which was also used. So it's not absolutely clear, but as mentioned before, Alnea might stand for uh, all near. And you see now in the 50s, uh, we are approaching the model that was one of the most successful. That was the Model 6. Uh, it had a range finder. Uh, this one here, this, spec uh, this specific one not, because the range finder was not horizontal like in a Leica. You see the window and then a little flap uh, at the bottom of the, uh, of the body. And there was, would have been the second one. So it was a vertical instead of a horizontal range finder plus the reflex finder itself. This one now, then the culmination point was this, this uh, Model 6B. Uh, what is special here is, I have one for you here, is normally you would expect that you wind like this, not with Alpha. Alpha is always a little bit special. So you wind like this. So it goes the other way around. Why? Because when you have it to your eyes, uh, you might interfere with your thumb uh, manipulating so they thought, okay, we do it the other way around. Plus, it doesn't need so much uh, gearbox uh, gear uh, stuff, and it was working quite nicely. Also, something very special with Alpha is you do not release like this, so not in the vertical, because this could force you into into uh, an onshore picture. It is here, so you are. Uh, giving force in the direction of the optical axis, something like this. So you wind it like this and you release it like this. Very special. Uh, not so many cameras had this and it's, uh, uh, it's quite interesting. Here's something, uh, what, what I told you before, uh, you have here a very nice uh, illustration from uh, from a billboard and it here you see the folding mirror it was everything was so tiny and and, and cramped inside that um, uh, this uh, even the, the the mirror was working that was a really really nice idea um, so they had this mirror going up and folding a little bit so that it uh, it could use uh, make the, the, the most uh, of the space available uh, what you also see here uh, on the upper upper right and a little bit in the lower part 
that's the range finder with the with the two windows uh, for the range finder but as I said in a vertical position not in a horizontal one time goes by here you see one model a very uh, a very famous model 7 why very famous uh, you see DDE and that was one of the cameras Dwighty Eisenhower was using so the American president uh, uh, after the, the war was um, using or he was into photography and he was amongst maybe others also using alpha cameras for his hobby. This is the, uh, the letter to the, uh, to the importer to the US uh, thanking for exchanging his trusted model seven with the later model nine. And so um, uh, we have absolutely no clue uh, if this was uh, given for free or not, uh, but at least um, it was uh, in the right hand. Alpha was always a very, very small company around the workforce of 100 people, not more. Um, what they did is quite interesting because it was more or less similar to what happened later with the new Alpha. Of course, the company was too small to uh, do their own uh, optic calculation and optic manufacturing. So what they did is they sourced lenses with others. And we did the same later. So you would see in the 50s, in the, no, I, I would say in the 60s, starting with Schneider, Ingenieur, Old Delft. Some of the, of the companies already working with Alpa or collaborating with Alpa, we were collaborating later again. What is interesting here uh, is they uh, first started with this Selene metering. So the metering was outside the body, but not for long uh, because in the 60s with the Model 9D, and it was really nearly a, a world first, uh, only beaten by, I would say, some a very small uh, time, uh, uh, I would say weeks or days, that was a real TTL, so a, a metering through the lens. And Alpa was no, number one, that was Topcon later on, or, or yeah, and Alpha was number two in the world with a TTL metering, something you take for granted as a normal thing today. As mentioned, corporations, um, it was part then and it makes part today. And what we found uh, in the archives from the old Novoflex uh, was something uh, very interesting that already back then, in the, around in the 60s, they made for Alpha a Bello system. And nowadays we're also using Novoflex as provider for our Bellows. Something more important, of course, and also more prestigious and, uh, and, uh, and thrilling is Alpha was connected in a, in, a, in a friendly way to the a Swiss company Kern. Uh, Kern uh, made some optical instruments, uh, theodolites and, and stuff like this, so quite complex things. And they also made their own lenses because they needed for their, for their measuring uh, instruments. So they had this optic manufacturing and uh, optical calculation uh, bureau. And what they made is for Alpa, the Sweetar. And you here see also it's the Cine Sweetar. That's, that's of course, those are the lenses for the Bolex film or movie camera. And what they did is now they approach them um, uh, for the moon landing for Apollo 11. And so these lenses have been to the moon as the very first and only back then uh, Cine lenses uh, taken with them uh, in the Eagle, in the lander uh, module. Later on, it was also Ingenieur, it was before Ingenieur, but for 
the uh, for the mission with Apollo 11, it, we had this uh, Cineus Vuitton lenses um, on our, uh, our earthly treban. Andre, I'm actually going to just jump in real quick because a question came to the Q&A that's relevant to what we're talking about right now. And just yep. for a little bit of clarification, uh, Ben asks, would Alpa design their own lenses or just use a Schneider or other manufacturer lens without modification? Um, it is, uh, we are using large format lenses, so maybe we have to go a, a bit into uh, deeper into that. Um, there is, um, at the moment, there are only or were only two real manufacturers uh, um, alive when we started with the new Alpha. That was Schneider and Rodenstock. So um, uh, the basic idea is uh, it's, it's the standard lens, but what we do with them is uh, we are the only manufacturer that um, has all the lenses completely finished as a product with the, uh, the manufacturer. So we do not just uh, uh, buy the raw lenses and then uh, uh, mount them ourselves. Um, all our lenses get mounted and finished as a product with Rodenstock today and later uh, earlier uh, with Schneider. And we make a one-to-one -one optical control here. So you can say, okay, it is maybe the same lens, but it's not the same lens because it, it always has the top notch uh, uh, coverage uh, with Rodenstock as they do it themselves. And uh, we uh, make also the controls. So uh, we do not go for every single lens they make, just for those we think uh, fit uh, the system. So it's not, uh, we are calculating lenses at the moment. Uh, we're making use of, uh, of the existing lenses from uh, Rodenstock, uh, earlier from Schneider. What we do is, you see it in the background here, uh, that's a 138 Alpagon. And lots of the lenses uh, in the recent days, they were at least heavily influenced by our needs. And we came up and we, want, we said, okay, we want to have this and this lens. We need this and this lens. Our a customer want to have uh, this type of lens. So I hope this uh, answers the question. Uh, it does for current times. Now, just relating it back to Alpha in the past, uh, I believe you mentioned this, but it bears repeating. You, Alpha was not previously making lenses before, correct? They just were picking what was kind of available, yeah, working yeah, with manufacturers yeah. and having them made in the mount. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's, it's a very similar process. They were sourcing their lenses um, uh, from uh, proven and uh, well-known manufacturers, as also back then from Schneider, from Ingenieur. Um, they, made, uh, they made it work for their cameras, of course, because as you know, each system has uh, its own bayonet. It has only uh, its mounting, its flange. Everything is very special. So. Uh, it's not a one-to-one, -one, uh, but the optical formula is more or less what's the same. Thank you. Okay. So maybe something here. Uh, again, Switar uh, used to be part of the uh, Leica, uh, Leica Geosystems, uh, Leica Microsystems universe, but they abandoned the brand. So uh, we were able to acquire it and to renew it. And so Switar nowadays is our own brand. In between, uh, maybe those who are familiar with the system, they know that there were uh, a lens like Helvetar. And the Helvetar is also for Helvetica, so for, for, for Switzerland, uh, because Switar was not available. Uh, it was a stand-in, it was a, a, a replacement brand. Uh, until then, we were so lucky that we got the Switar brand, uh, the original one. Um, jumping to the 70s, and the 70s be, will become very important. Um, Alpha was quite interested in uh, having still sturdy and working and, 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 and perfect cameras. So what they did, they introduced uh, electronics. Uh, the, the SI, the 11SI is uh, kind of the pinnacle of this evolution. Um, it has electronics inside. Um, it has a light metering that was very precise. It was even 
back then, uh, taking the lens, uh, the, the light from the lens, and the false light might fall through the uh, ocular, so the uh, uh, where you had your eyes was compensated so that the reading was not false from uh, uh, or misleading from uh, from the false light. You see here also Kinon, uh, Kinoptic, uh, very famous lenses back then. But in the 70s, everybody knows and most or most of you know what happened is it was the, the big bang for uh, the Japanese manufact uh, camera manufacturers. In the 70s, more or less, all the big players in Germany, uh, in France, in Great Britain went belly up. They couldn't compete with uh, with uh, the Canons and the Nikons and, and all what all, everything that was coming up from uh, from Japan, which was most often just better than what they did at a lower cost and with more lenses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So in the 70s, brands like Contarex disappeared um, and, and others. Alpa managed in a way to survive. They did some very strange stuff. They did some stuff with uh, gold plated or, or collector items, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, which was their way to survive at least these days. What they also did in the 80s, they try. Okay, yeah, we cannot do a complete. Uh, development uh, in Switzerland with a small company and with, with even lower uh, uh, sales figures. So what they tried is something not so nice, uh, but at least interesting. They tried to source it. Uh, and so what you see here is an Alpa uh, made in Japan. Uh, it is from Kinon. Um, that was an SI 2000 and 3000. They, they had even uh, changing everything also with the, with the mount. Uh, it was a complete failure, so to say. Um, it was not survive. It was not helping to survive. Uh, it was the last attempt um, for them to come back with uh, with sales and numbers. It was not working. And the very, very, very last attempt was then this here. Uh, that's a very rare picture. It, it shows a mock-up. Of a potential design of a of a of an Alpha 12. Um, that's now you see also why the Alpha 12 is named Alpha 12. Also for us because it was the the, the successor uh, in the numbering system. So the last one was 11. This 12 here, it's just a mock-up. It shows an uh, 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 interchangeable uh, viewfinder potentially. Um, this was just this design study mock-up. Uh, we were we are very happy that we got this uh, image uh, from the uh, Swiss Camera Museum in Vevey. They have uh, the largest collection of the old and the new Alpas, um, because also Vevey is in the French part, uh, speaking part of uh, of Switzerland, and um, we uh, they have the connection there, of course. So this is the final point, and then the shutter was closing. So the company, the original company, Alpha, went bankrupt. And it took six years until uh, Ursula and Thomas were able to acquire the brand and only the brand name. Nothing else was working. Um, it was said um, the company itself or the, the manufacturing place was not in good shape. Um, spare part was of unclear uh, quality, so they ended up with uh, just acquiring the brand and starting something new. And now we are in 1996, end of uh, end of the 90s, um, where the company got established. Established, and you see now, okay, but um, uh, 1998, so two years, um, what happened? In 1996, their original idea was based on this 
type of camera. That's the Elmanox, um, later size I Econ model. Uh, it was a, a camera with a very, very fast lens. Uh, it was a 2.0, 100 mil lens. And it was famous uh, for this gentleman here. It's uh, Eric Solomon, who uh, was very famous because he was using this lens. And this lens changed photography because he was able to work without flashlight. And uh, uh, the image you see there is uh, Aristide Briand and, and uh, 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 Gedorse, also in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the State Department uh, of France. And the very famous uh, saying is, Allo uh, voilà le roi des indiscrets because he was always there and uh, he was always there and took pictures. So he was, uh, oh, there he is, the king of the indiscreet. And he was very famous, he was accepted, he was a reporter. Um, he was uh, in the League of Nations. Uh, he was uh, in more or less um, every, every gathering uh, of the, of the after-war uh, community, uh, political communities. Uh, unfortunately, he has, uh, his wife and uh, his uh, younger son uh, got murdered afterwards uh, in uh, in one of the concentration camps uh, in uh, in Auschwitz, and uh, he is really uh, famous for his for renewing and bringing in this type of photography. So this was the, the basic idea, and then you see here the evolution and and how it. It went on from there. So plasticine, uh, cardboard, everything was made to how could it work? How could it look like? Um, these are in our, we still have them, of course. Uh, they are in our uh, uh, own museum uh, for documentation. And in 1996, so in the same year, they were preparing everything. And then once they got the name, uh, they came up with this idea of a camera. They went to Photokina and had to realize, oh, oh, it's not working. It's not the real stuff. Uh, it is too complicated. Everything here you see is made like jewelry. It's absolutely, so the, the craft is fantastic. Uh, they were using size lenses, so adapted the Hasselblad lenses. Everything was nicely made, but and that's a big fortune. Uh, it was not working. It was not, it was not really well received uh, also from the people there uh, at uh, Cologne, at the Photokina. And then they realized, okay, either we stop here now or we make a complete 180 turn and do something else. Imagine this camera would have been accepted by the community. Uh, you have a completely integrated camera that would never ever have been able to, or with 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 uh, with normal cost, to bring that into the digital age. And the big turning point was this uh, photo kina when uh, Thomas and Ursula were on their way back uh, to Switzerland. They said, "Okay, we have to restart completely." And you see here original drawings, or the, one of the first drawings, then uh, it's uh, from October 96. Um, that's right after the September uh, photo kina. I said, okay, we have to work on this and we have to do something else. And you see here also an integrated camera with, uh, which would not have been uh, able to accept uh, uh, digital backs so easy. Um, and it went on. So you see, the, they made mock-ups. Uh, so this is, these are wooden mock-ups with, uh, uh, with weights inside so that it's more or less the, the, the correct weight. And uh, uh, it was really um, something very nice. And we have it also here, uh, this variant. And here you see something is going on. And it evolves into what we know today as the SWA. It is a completely modular camera from A to C. 
uh, it is the camera body is given or is provided with some functionality like shift, rise and fall, or whatever. Uh, this one was the very first one, also the first attempt to use wood because the uh, the aluminum is uh, not so nice in the cold. So let's use something uh, more nice and more uh, uh, so something warmer to touch. Here you see the complete, and that's uh, go, uh, yeah, it's spring 1998. Um, that's a complete layout, that's the universe that was laid out for the system. And in the lower left corner, you might see something like uh, digital backs, uh, Megavision, Phase 1, Dicomet, Kodak, Leaf. So already uh, end of the, uh, of the 90s, they were thinking of, okay, there will be something like this in the future. At least we have to take care of it. In 1998? What's, yeah. I was going to say, what's great about that uh, hand drawn uh, flow chart of compatibility in 1998, you still have that today. Yeah. You, you, you have modern versions of this today that shows the whole Alpha ecosystem. It's, it's amazing to see the transition from that then to you still have that now as a more technical document. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> it was really, and that's, uh, this is hand-drawn, everything yeah. from, uh, from Thomas. Uh, I have to say Thomas is uh, by, uh, originally by profession, uh, he is graphic designer. Uh, and now psychologist and yeah, a little bit more. Um, so, but uh, from the very, very beginning, these are the genes of the graphic designer who has to lay it out everything and to, to, make, it, to make it work. And it's really nicely uh, drawn and uh, it's, everything is in the original. Yeah. So in 1998, so they came up with this new camera, this new type of camera. You see here um, uh, the the image that was taken for the Red Dot Design Award. Back then it was not so inflated as, as, as today, uh, so it was a little bit more compact and not so many prices. Um, and it, they earned the, the highest design uh, quality uh, achievement prize and the best of the best. So interesting also here, when they made the picture or when they made this, this illustration image that went into the book, uh, and catalog, uh, it shows the camera with what? A phase one digital back. <laughs> so even back then, um, there was something, okay, the world will become digital. And so uh, that's the camera you, mind, you may know. Uh, it is the SWA, so with the shift, uh, with the rising front, uh, it is the WA without. Uh, the rising from uh, also fu a funny story here. Uh, they've been to uh, Paris back then uh, for uh, for a little show, and they say, well, uh, they were so nervous and uh, a very nice, uh, not so tall uh, Frenchman came straight from the entrance to their desk, uh, and together with him, lots of people. And he came to their desk and said, okay, that's what I need. That's what I was waiting for all my, not all my life, but for a long time. It used to be uh, Raymond Depardon, which is one of the Dogen, uh, one of the really uh, uh, very well-known Magnum photographers in France, uh, filmer and, uh, and photographer. And uh, Raymond is, or was, the absolutely customer number one. So it was kind of a, of a knighthood to them uh, that a Magnum photographer came and said, okay, that was, that, that, that's a product I, I always was looking for. Later on, uh, we said, okay, we have to do something smaller. By the way, I joined the company as a customer in uh, around 2000, uh, and I bought me and I paid an Alpha 12. So, um, 
okay? Uh, it it uh, came out the other way, and uh, now I'm with uh, Alpha for not 20 years, but something like 17, 18 years. The PC here that got invented or was created or co-created or whatever uh, in a night train from Beijing to Taiwan, the Yellow Mountains. Um, we've, we've been sitting in, in this, this night train because there, there was no flight uh, after the show in Beijing and we had to uh, ride the train. And it was something very, uh, a very interesting experience. Um, and uh, our, uh, unfortunately, uh, deceased um, Chinese uh, representative, uh, Fred Cho, uh, we were sitting in this train and we were discussing and with translators and it was quite complex and uh, everybody was tired. And we said, okay, we have to have something new and something smaller. And uh, the, more or less uh, um, during that night, uh, the idea of, okay, in what direction could we think um, was, was born. Um, as always, we are trying at least to listen to our customers. And uh, we had one customer, he was showing up every single show, also here in Switzerland, and say, well, I need something like this, I need something like this, I need something like this. There was an architecture photographer, uh, also a trained architect, and um, he said, okay, I need to have something with much more uh, movements, uh, a sturdy thing um, for film uh, later, also, also 2006, also for, for, for digital. And that became the XY. XY because of the movements in the X and the Y uh, direction. Making the whole thing smaller, you have the max. Interesting here, we always said, okay, uh, our customers want to work fast. So uh, this uh, very convenient and easy uh, um, uh, locking, unlocking, uh, you just unlock it and then you can move it very fast, uh, was invented um, with the XY in a very, very uh, elaborate version and uh, then also uh, optimized here in the Mac. Uh, by the way, the Max is the, is the most sold camera body uh, Alpha has. Um, some years later, um, as things evolve, you have to think, you have to think new places, new rooms, where could you place something else? And we said, okay, um, we have everything in two dimensions. Now let's make it smaller in one dimension. And the STC was born. And the STC stands, the TC is for travel compact, but the S is not for shift, it is for, uh, for stitching. So horizontal stitching was the whole thing that you can make use of the large image circles and use it for uh, landscape photography. FPS, some eight years ago, um, we saw the problem that most probably there will be an issue with the Copal shuffle. Um, nobody was listening and we said, okay, uh, let's do our own thing. And we made this attempt and said, okay, we want to have an integrated camera with a focal plane shutter that is available, that will stay available for some time. And the uh, completely electronic FPS was born. The whole, pro the whole project of this camera was fulfilled within below one year. So from the very first drawing to when we showed it, including a firmware at Photokina took below one year. And I was quite, uh, I know I can remember uh, the, these uh, times it was quite uh, um, packed with, uh, with everything. Got some design prizes, not so much. In 14, we had this, uh, this uh, A-series uh, uh, collab with, uh, with, the, uh, with phase one. In 2016, uh, we got the opportunity to become the only company uh, who has officially the whole Hasselblad 
lens protocol. So also the idea back then was, okay, those are quite nice lenses, at least with a very reliable shutter back then. Uh, and so we uh, decided to integrate it. And so the FPS speaks Canon, the FPS speaks Nikon, it speaks uh, Contax, Rolleye, and also Hasselblad H. So it can really control everything of that. Uh, in 2016, we had this anniversary and we said, okay, we, we, we want to uh, celebrate it. It was um, 20 years uh, of Alpa, so since the uh, acquisition of the brand. And it, it was uh, by coincidence 70 years uh, since uh, the registration of the brand name. So we made this, uh, this anniversary. We came up with ideas, okay, uh, you would say there are enough um, tripod heads in the market. We said, okay, but we want to have it modular. We want to have it uh, ex extendable, expandable. So we came up with the GORN, which consists of several modules we can put together. Uh, Silex is the electronic part or just the electronics from SPS. We used it also for uh, for the um, uh, for the not so successful e shutter. And in 2018, um, we decided that we have to go the road with moving image or the convergence between the the, the still image and also the um, uh, moving image. And so, because uh, Hasselblad offered this uh, digital back that was able to uh, capture capture uh, uh, movies, uh, we said, okay, we want to do something like that, like this, and integrate it and make it better. We made a cooling, we made fans, we made everything—a whole universe around this whole thing—and now we have a modular, unique, 4K big sensor uh, toolbox that you can also use uh, for, for movies. It will be used next uh, uh, in a collaboration between Germany, uh, Austria and Switzerland for, uh, for, uh, um, for a movie um, which goes to the cinema. So the Platon and the FPS speak towards Alpha's uh, solutions as a tool maker as well as this next product that Andre is gonna show us. Yeah, um, we, we convinced or we had this, sometimes also the same idea, uh, also together with, uh, with Novaflex that we say, okay, in the digital age, you have one enemy and that's diffraction. So you, you can't just close the, the aperture. Uh, you have to use techniques, either it is, uh, it is uh, shine flow, uh, sometimes not possible tilt, or you go for uh, for the extreme ones, and then it is uh, it is uh, focus stacking. And we made together with uh, Novaflex uh, this product uh, because we already were working on uh, together with Rodenstock on this uh, 105 uh, Marco Suite lens, which is a highly resolving lens, um, which which was made ready for photography um, and plus this, the, the whole uh, hardware and software to have it in a very, very precise way and very convenient way that you have a stacking unit uh, which is reliable and also, and also flexible. And for example, this here, um, it's also on the website. Uh, we have, uh, we have mu with museums, uh, this insect uh, consisting of some, I don't know, 500, 700, 800 images stacked together. Uh, this is in Berlin, uh, the Naturkunde Museum, uh, and they were, um, or they are on the way to, uh, to, ca to catalog their, their uh, uh, specimens uh, with, their, with their insects. Um, some new models in, in 18, we had, we had the PLUS, which is nowadays the, the, the standard model for architecture, for landscape, for in our range. And a special limited series for China. I, I have to say this is, was really a, a limited series. And uh, so it's not available 
Uh, maybe it will become available again, but for the moment not. It is the Alpha 12 panel with very large movements, uh, making use of uh, the uh, large image circles of a 90 millimeter Alpagon or a 138 for panoramic images. Um, Fuji came up with the GF100 uh, and we said, okay, uh, that's a nice camera. It, has, it is also capable of, uh, of uh, taking images plus movies, um, but it's not really working uh, in the industry. So we came up together with, uh, with a partner and made a high end, a very high end modular uh, cage system for this camera uh, completely um, with the rod system, everything there. We will see it. Finally, we got the first one. Just to say it, the, the 138 was a brainchild of, of this always repeated uh, questions uh, from, from our manufacturers. What do you need now? And we always said, okay, we, we need something in between this and that lens, that focal length. Uh, let's make something like a 140, 135. Uh, it turned out a 138. It is the very first medium, large format technical camera lens with a floating element. So uh, quality stays consistent between infinity and one to four due to this uh, um, uh, floating element. Um, but on the other hand, and because of some realities, it took us six years to get the lens. And now we just got the first three, four lenses, uh, and they will drip in maybe this year uh, because it's a very complex lens, and it also happens to be our most expensive lens. Uh, we also made uh, the Cine Sweet Tars um, for the large format lenses. They cover uh, over 60 millimeters, uh, in fact, up to 70 millimeter of uh, image circle. What happens this year is, you, you know, or most of you know that we, we, we lost Copal as a, as a shutter, as a mechanical shutter. Um, we more or less lost the e-shutter uh, due, to, uh, due to Leica. Um, we still have the FPS as a focal plane shutter. Uh, we will see if it shows up the, the, the new X shutter from phase one, of course, we will integrate it. We will offer it to our customers. There are some caveats, some drawbacks. It's only working with an IQ4 uh, digital back. Um, and we do not expect it to be really available also because of COVID, uh, in our case, before spring 21. And of course, you have uh, the, the IQ3, IQ4 uh, line of digital packs, which, has, uh, which features uh, an electronic shutter. Uh, what are we working on, or, or where are we? Uh, Alpa is still mainly, it's an architectural camera, and here speaking from the real architecture, interior architecture, interior design, etc. Uh, landscape and cityscape. A little bit less because those of you who are professionals uh, know the problems with the, the commercial side, um, uh, the budgets, and the, yeah, it's going they are going down. And uh, so also for us, the commercial part is a little bit shrinking. Uh, we fill it up with this focus stacking uh, macro. It's uh, very important for collections, for museums, to have a very convenient uh, solution. Uh, we still uh, are a brand and a camera that is used for fine art. And a small part will remain, but not in the forefront uh, with the moving image. To sum it up, what is ALPA standing for? Um, we live quality and we press quality and we want to have quality in the hands of our customers. We want to have uh, these products precise, integrated as a modular system and very important for us uh, in a sustainable way. So we are not making products that are breaking just because 
we can then sell a new one. We want to have reliable, long-living products in, as a result, also a sustainable product, which is, uh, which is pay, uh, speaking for itself. We still have a very, we, we are um, aficionados of design and we want to have special design. And last but not least, the whole thing, there should be a little bit of joy. Uh, you should have this joy. I hope uh, you can go out uh, for photography and for what you love um, more in the future, not hindered by whatever circumstances we are living now with. And therefore, um, Alpa is there. If you have questions, drop us a note, drop us an email. Uh, uh, we also offer offer uh, uh, video calls for for um, for um, communication, whatever you want. So please do it. Let us know if you have uh, questions. If you have something uh, you want to know, uh, we are here and we try to answer as, as soon uh, as fast as possible. It's time now, and uh, I can say a big, big thank you to all of you who are interested in photography, and very special also, uh, or especially also in, in, in Alpha. And we hope uh, that we will see you also in person. I know some of our uh, loved and trusted customers, long year, uh, yeah, for, for long years now, uh, customers and, and even friends are uh, now uh, maybe listening. We have a very special relationship to our friends, customers, photographers, and we try to keep that up. And I hope uh, together we will have um, also in the future a very good time. So a big, big thank you uh, also to Anthony, also to PhotoCare to give us the opportunity to um, show this or to, to share this, uh, this lightweight ideas and uh, a little bit of history over the last, last 100 years with you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Andre. Uh, we appreciate everybody coming. We do have a few questions here, Andre, yeah. before you run. Um, looks no, like there's about 10 or so, 11 or so in here right now. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scroll through them and, and, and ask them. Uh, Bill asks, is Alpa still making adapters for Roly 600X or High 6 lenses use on current uh, Alpa camera bodies? Um, uh, if we get enough um, demand, yes. Um, I had to coin the the the. We are not we are not uh, just uh, dumping everything and say okay we will not uh, produce it anymore. But uh, we need a, a given number. We could produce it at the moment. Is there is no production run. Uh, if we face enough demand, we can uh, make another run. And but it has to go to be uh, to be clear. Um, this adapters for the roll eye lenses control the roll eye lenses. It has to go with an FPS, where it becomes a hybrid, so leaf shutter and focal plane shutter, or together with the uh, with the Silex with the control module, uh, it is not working on its own. And therefore, it would be feasible to redo them and to launch them again, but we need some demand. Makes sense. Uh, Denny asks, is Alpa making any TS lens adapter for Alpa 12? Because only available can, uh, can tilt but not swing. So do you want to explain how someone can do tilt and swing on an Alpa product? Um, it, it is feasible when you uh, when you have a so-called short barrel 34 millimeter lens. Then you can add two 17 millimeter uh, adapters, and then you have tilt and swing. Uh, at the moment, uh, we have, uh, for precision reasons, we have this um, uh, tilt or swing, depending because we have a square mount, and you can have it in either position and then it is tilt then it is tilt or swing but as i said uh the combination only works if you have to spare 34 millimeter of uh, of uh, distance and then you can uh, use two there might be a product in the future but not tomorrow uh, uh we are thinking of 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 other stuff 
but then it has to go beyond this, um, uh, what we see now. Thank you. Uh, Nabil asked, do you still produce the uh, 12XY? No, <laughs> no. Uh, the XY uh, retired in uh, some years ago, and but we are still we are still um, having some uh, secondhand ones. So if somebody is interested, uh, please contact us via, for example, PhotoCare or so, and we can see what is possible. But uh, at the moment, because the XY is a is a child of this of this this time where we had this film with a large six by nine uh, uh, cassette and the digital. So you had this very sturdy big one uh, with large movement, uh, which is not really really necessary at the moment uh, with uh, with digital. But please, if you have some questions. Uh, approach uh, PhotoCare, uh, they can approach us and we can see what we can make, at least with a, with a, with a pre-owned one. We can certainly try and help you out with that if you want to get in touch. Uh, ben asked, how many years have you been with Alba? Uh, really depends. So uh, um, you can say 20 years or 18 years. All right. Uh, we've got a question from Drop Shop Digital Studios. Uh, will Alpa be releasing an STC comparison with horizontal movements greater than 18 millimeter right and left? Um, it's not planned at the moment, but anyway, as I said, if you see the need, let us know. Uh, and then we can try to see what we can figure out what is possible. Uh, and uh, what is more is more 20, is more 25, whatever. Uh, so uh, we, we are li really looking for this, for this, um, for this uh, uh, dialogue. And uh, please let us know. Uh, let's see, another user asks, is there any future for the Silex and its lenses? Uh, Salix is still there, and yeah. uh, Salix can also control, uh, still can control um, uh, Canon lenses, Nikon lenses. Uh, we have this uh, complete system. Uh, maybe I go back. Uh, here is the uh, TC, a Silex version one, not the version two, and the half a blood lens. So it is, everything is still available. Uh, let's see. Uh, Steven asks, was Alpa working with Leica on the electronic shutter and they ended the partnership? I guess he's looking for a little clar uh, clarification on the end of, uh, end of no, life no, on the no, electronic no. shutter. No, no, no. Um, uh, fact is, uh, the, the shutter itself was originally from a Sinar or Sinar, as you say. Um, um, it got made faster, first with a 125th of a second, later with a 1250th of a second. Um, we have not all the information um, why they stopped it. Um, but uh, as uh, Sinar got acquired by, by Face, uh, sorry, Face One, uh, by Leica, uh, it, was their, uh, it was their decision and they said, nope, um, we want to stop it. And, um, we were the only ones, apart from Sinar itself, who was supporting the shutter in the beginning, uh, as, at least as an alternative. And uh, we made all the efforts to integrate it into, into Silex. Uh, we had the only really, really working, completely independent uh, uh, control box outside, um, uh, even earlier than, than, uh, than Leica or, or Sinar itself. But unfortunately, that's the situation as it is, so we cannot change it. All right, uh, let's see here. A couple more questions. Uh, I will follow up with Denny privately about what he's got. He's looking for a part. Uh, let's see here. Robert is asking, are there preferred repair shops in the USA for older Alpha models, the Alnea, Model 55, 6, 10? 
Um, we have uh, we have it uh, we have it um, uh, on the website, and um, if you have a specific question, we we can try. But I really, to be honest, they are also they are also uh, um, uh, getting less and less. So we can try to uh, to send you an updated list. Uh, let's see. Massimo asks, have you considered modularizing movements to add as needed depending upon lens coverage? Um, I do not get completely the question. Modularizing for? Uh, it says, have you considered modularizing movements to add as needed depending upon lens coverage? That's, that's all I've got here for the question. Um, no, not so far, but uh, but at least the idea was there. If if this is possible to have this dimension uh, modularized, but at the moment, because of of uh, of uh, stability reasons, not. But um, as I said, we are thinking of 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 other ideas. How to uh, what could be a camera or what could be photography in the future. So apart from being an iPhone, a smartphone, uh, an Android, whatever. So, uh, but it's it's a little bit too early to uh, to come up with details here. Okay. Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, Massimo also asked: Are the camera camera photographs part of a larger project beyond this presentation? Perhaps a book on Alpha design. Uh, <laughs> it, it is already, it, it, it got an ISBN number and uh, um, we made kind of a, we made kind of a book, uh, but it was uh, originally meant, I, I made it and it was originally meant as a, as a, as a birthday gift uh, to uh, Thomas Weber uh, because he is also, he was born in 1946. So by coincidence, he's also 70, he turned 70 years back then. And um, our Chinese friends, they, uh, they were really eager. And so there are some copies uh, in China. Uh, and yes, it is, still, it is still an idea to make an official book out of it. Sounds great. All right, I think we've, uh, we've answered all the questions, unless one great. slides in real quick. But um, Andre, I want to thank you so much. It's always a pleasure hearing from you and uh, getting, the, getting the whole history on Alpa. Uh, uh, this is just another continuation in our uh, online uh, knowledge uh, sharing uh, series that we've been doing. We kind of started all of these back when uh, we were all working from home, locked down in quarantine. Now that uh, we've returned back to the store here at PhotoCare, mm -hmm. we're continuing them to help get information, knowledge, and uh, information out there. So uh, we do plan to have more of these. You can always check out uh, photocare.com's event page for, for, for more events. And I believe that we're working on a second installment of this Alpha series where it's more about uh, images made and, and yeah. how to use the cameras. So uh, keep an eye out for that one. And um, I just really wanna thank everybody for coming. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to get in touch with us, feel free to get in touch with Alpha and we'll, we'll help you out however we can. Andre, again, thank you so much for, for being here and, 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 and working through this with us today. And I want to thank everybody who tuned in and stuck with us through to the end. Thank you as well. I hope you all have a great day and uh, we will talk to you soon. Thank you. And stay safe. Stay safe. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.